I remember looking around this corporate office, seeing people looking sad, looking despondent, lacking energy. Maybe they've been at the company for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. And I just thought, this can't be me. Welcome to the Self Belief Chief Podcast. You're here with David Holman. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it so you can get the latest insights, research, science, experiences that I've been having with clients so you can get some added value and really get those changes that you want in your life. And let's begin. So I was looking around this office floor. I was about 24 at the time. And people just looking dejected, lacking energy, didn't really have any passion for what they were doing. So this was a big company. People sort of 30, 40 years older than me and I just thought, this can't be me. You know, no problem for them if that's if that's what they want to do and we have responsibilities in life. If that's the job they want, that's all power to them. But I wanted to be doing something where I was passionate about it. I had an, a level of energy. I really felt like I was making a difference. And the thing was, when it comes to changing careers, I'd already had to do it once. I was a footballer growing up and I had to retire because of an injury, really. You know, I, I could I was sort of playing, but I wasn't really able to play at the level I'd been showing previously. So I kind of had to give it up. So I moved into this corporate world. And then I was looking around this corporate world and I was thinking, I don't, I don't want this. This isn't my life. And I'd always had an interest in human behavior ever since about 14, 15 years old. And I'd been researching and studying it for years, even by that point. So I knew there was something in that space that I wanted to do. And for a couple of years, I, I started getting into the idea of maybe creating a coaching business or something along those lines. But I knew where I was wasn't for me. So I, I actually had to change, not only to change careers twice, change industries twice. And I know how terrifying it is and how uncomfortable it is. And why many, many people just settle. But here's the issue with just settling for something that you don't really want to do. Jim Carrey told a story of his father. And his father was a very talented musician, and he could have been a musician anywhere. But he wanted to keep it safe, so he got a job He got a job as an accountant. So rather than travelling and doing what he loved to do, and at the you know, risk of it all, he decided to be an accountant because he thought it was a safe job. A year into the job, he got made redundant. And the family struggled for years after that. The meaning Jim Carrey took from that when he was older was, you can fail at something you don't love. So you might as well have a go at what you do love. I've always, that's always stuck with me. and But I've always liked certainty and security as well. So it's like, how do you marry those two things up together? Well, I want to take you through the five steps I take my clients through. I sort of studied... My own experience is changing careers. I studied other people. I then worked with plenty of people. I worked with people who've done it really successfully to model five steps that people who successfully change careers all do. So here we go. The first step, I call it your future found, your future found. I take people through a series of about, I don't know, 20 something questions where it keeps narrowing down and narrowing down and narrowing down the options and the industries and the choices so they get really, really clear and specific because clarity brings things closer. We've got to know what the bullseye is. We've got to know what we're aiming at. Now, one of the things people struggle is with is people go, oh, there's lots of different directions I could go. I actually think it really helps to eliminate things first. So you go on Google and do a simple search for industry sectors. A whole list comes up at the top and you can just cross them off. Just cross off all the ones that you think I've got no interest in. I don't think my skill set serves that well. And you might only be left with, say, two or three industry sectors from, you know, however many there were in the first place. You know, you've cut down 95% of them. And then within those, you can start narrowing down and playing with those a little bit. But we've got to find your future. Get some ideas first. get Get a sense of what the right direction might be. The second step, I call it risk reduced. The thing that's going to stop someone from changing careers is if they associate more pain with changing than staying. People who leave associate more pain with staying than changing. 
But if you kind of go back and forth, it's, oh, staying feels really, uh, sorry, changing feels really painful. And staying feels painful. So risk reduced is about getting certainty in some key areas like your finances, your relationships and your mental well-being. So I, I help people shore those things up so that actually they can increase their sense of certainty. So if their certainty is only like a three out of 10 when it comes to changing careers, I'll try and get it up to say an eight or a nine. You're never going to get it to a 10, but can I get it nice and high so that actually we can kind of safeguard ourselves and protect ourselves if things take a bit longer or this is a bit more taxing or challenging. And I'm an advocate for people to, to stay in their role until they find the next thing. But sometimes we get made redundant, don't we? And we're trying to find the next thing. So your future found, risk reduced. The third step is called meet opportunity. So once we know what we're looking to do roughly, is to then try and find those um, decision makers around those roles. Try and work out who they are, even if it's just the positions. Try and find out what they value most. What do they value most? Because it's not about what we value. It's about what they value. So you can find out five to ten people in this space, right, who know the sorts of things that we want to do. Try and reach out, connect with them, and try and find the common denominator between what they all value. Because if you can find that common denominator, then we can move into the fourth step, which is called the belief breakthrough. This is where we take that common denominator of what they all value and develop it. Or if we've got to let something go, let go of something. But developing the thing that they value. Don't just do a load of random things to develop. Just be really efficient and developing the thing that most of those people value. That's how we can get that confidence because then we're developing in a way that we know is valuable in that space. So we've got your future found. We've got risk reduced. We've got meet opportunity. We've got the belief breakthrough. And then the fifth step is interview ready. So once we've developed in that value that they all appreciate, then we can you know, design our CVs, our LinkedIn profiles, any other messaging or communication to basically present that value in a really powerful, impactful way, demonstrating we have a level of expertise in it. But also to give that confidence in interviews as well, to know how to give the interviewer what they value. I find if you go through those five steps, it makes it a hell of a lot smoother. And they're the five steps I had to take myself through, right? I gave them names at a later point, but they were the kind of things that I did to help kind of go through it a bit, a bit smoother. And it will still be tough. It'll still be challenging. It'll still be, you know, frustrating at points or, you know, a bit, a bit more stressful. But if we can reduce as much of that as possible so those feelings are less intense, then you'll keep taking action. And if you keep taking action eventually you'll create enough leverage to get the thing that you really want and it'll be right in front of you you'll be able to feel it you'll be able to step into it and hopefully you like the sound of that if you want to know more about that you can visit the self-belief chief website you get more uh, free content more insights more in-depth information there my name is david holman if you change today today will change your life so enjoy the rest of your day enjoy the rest of your life and i'll speak to you again soon just one more thing before you go. So I hope you're enjoying the daily episodes. We put in a lot of work to keep providing content because to create permanent change needs consistency. To get that consistency, we want to make sure we keep providing you value on a daily basis. But to keep up with that pace, could we ask for one very small favor? If you could take the time to leave a five-star rating either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we'll put a link in the description for you to be able to do so. That really, really helps us out and helps us to keep providing content as frequently as we do. And we'll do one more thing to provide some extra value. If you take a screenshot of your rating or review and send it to selfbeliefchief at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram, I will provide you with a free coaching session with myself. Okay, so be fantastic if you could leave that five star rating so we can keep providing content just simply click on the link in the description it'll take you 20 seconds and if you want to go one step further take a screenshot of that rating and review send it to selfbeliefchief at gmail.com or dm us on instagram and we'll arrange a free coaching session for you hope you enjoy the rest of your day and see you on the next episode